Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to another edition of the RotoPros.com Best DFS Show that just happens to start around 8 Eastern Standard Time. My name is Rob Diamond, Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter, Sir Robert Six on all the main sites. Welcome to another edition of the EPL Breakdown for a midweek slate here on Tuesday, January 29, 2019. Let's jump right away into this. I'm really excited about this slate. The first game on the slate, we have Cardiff traveling to London to play Arsenal. We have Brighton making the trip to Fulham. Everton making the trip to Huddersfield. West Ham traveling to Wolves. Burnley making the trip to Man United. And Manchester City making the trip to Newcastle. So let's start off right away here. Uh, the first game of the slate. There's a few running themes that I'm going to have going throughout this entire slate that you're going to start to pick up on. The first running theme is that home home teams this slate are the go-to. Basically, across the board, if you're ever really stuck in a situation and you're not sure which direction you want to go, just choose the home team in the situation. And in many cases, either that's going to be a really good GPP play or just the go-to kind of cash option for the slate. And starting off the slate, we have basically that first meta of... Uh, of Cardiff traveling to Arsenal. Cardiff are unquestionably one of the worst away teams in the entire league and converse that Arsenal are an excellent home team and one of the highest scoring teams in the entire league. Now Cardiff are completely void of options. Greg Cunningham if he starts at the back I think is super viable for cash especially on DraftKings but in either site he does work because the salary is relatively low but the idea here is that we're looking to get a hold of Cunningham at a really low salary uh, for uh, a really low floor. We don't expect him really to finish. A double digits would be like a dream come true but very unlikely uh he's been doing it against all sorts of teams that he really had no business doing it against and he's been doing it without crosses so i think cunningham makes for a really sharp play from uh card of this slate because a lot of this uh premise from this game is built around the concept that arsenal are probably going to c- concede uh they're absolutely decimated at the back they've been bad all season at the back and they've conceded at a rate that could be consistent enough with selecting an away team team uh, of Car- Cal of Cardiff's caliber excuse me that's kind of hard to say uh, but in terms of uh, this uh, this slate I think a Camarasa is a really sharp play at only 4.3k uh, I necessarily wouldn't take him at, in cash as my favorite low end uh, salary option there is another that's cheaper that I do prefer more but in terms of uh, when you really need to punt uh, uh, for a salary in midfield this slate Camarasa is definitely some place I'm going to look to finish around 6 to 8 fans points on DraftKings. I'm not as psyched about it on uh, FanDuel where you'll find a little bit of a different situation with the salary, but on DraftKings I think that's absolutely viable from this slate. Another player I'm really considering is uh, Callum Patterson uh, at only 4.1k. I really don't think he is viable for cash by any means, but he's getting consistent 90-minute games or close there enough that if he does manage to find his way into that one goal that Cardiff should score this slate against Arsenal, he could really pay off from his salary. He is the leading scorer on Cardiff. It isn't like he's just a complete shot in the dark. Uh, He isn't obviously the best resounding play of any slate, but in terms of this slate, uh, I I really think that Arsenal are going to concede, and if we can jump on one of those goals you're really going to catch one, uh, especially in terms of the likes of Camarasa or uh, even even go of Kadeem Harris if he gets to start. I don't even hate that. He's he's relatively uh, active in, in the cross counts as well. Uh, so I, I there's a lot of Cardiff that I really like this slate. The one uh, part I'm concerned about that I think a lot of people will jump on is uh, Omar Nasi, uh, Niasi and while he isn't the worst play, his minutes haven't been there for Cardiff yet. And maybe once he gets a few more 90-minute games under his belt for Cardiff, starts are great, but we really want 90 minutes, especially this slate. That's going to be a big part of building this slate. Not only home teams, but 90 minutes. You need 90 minutes this slate. Uh, it's going to be incredibly crucial.
crucial because there's a lot of gaps in terms of uh, plays across the board where there's not going to be 90 minute uh, players, uh, especially when we look at the Manchester's. So I do like Cardiff for a goal. It's going to be where it's going to come from. I think uh, Callum, uh, Callum Patterson's a really good option. Uh, so is Victor Camarasa, one of my favorite low end uh, cash options. And same with uh, Greg Cunningham. I would definitely keep these guys uh, to DK over FanDuel, but I, I really don't have an issue uh, on either site with them because they're relatively relatively cheap on both. Now, in terms of Arsenal, I think Arsenal offers arguably the best options this slate in terms of attacking. Attacking. That's where I draw the line there. Uh, could they get a clean sheet? Absolutely. It's very possible. Slightly unlikely to me, but it it isn't the, the craziest thing I've ever heard of. It's more likely to happen for them at home than away. That's that's for sure. But where I'm starting to look, well, firstly, we can very quickly take a quick look at how injured uh, the Arsenal backline actually is. Uh, it's not a very good situation whatsoever. So really what we're looking at is that Koscielny is probably going to be playing some le- uh, some center back, some left back. Uh, it's kind of hard to say at this point, but I should say, excuse me, Koscielny, I completely apologize for that. He's most likely going to be out Monreal. And from that salary at 5.3K, if he's not a wing midfielder, it's really unviable and not something we should be going after, despite Cardiff being such a horrible away team. Uh, there's not really a clean sheet to chase there, not enough floor. Let's put it that way for cash. So no ceiling, no floor, just a, a fade for me. If you can jump on something in the midfield, it's gonna, definitely going to come at a cost, but they aren't the worst options. Uh, Cardiff gives up a lot of uh, corners and set pieces, so it isn't the worst idea to try and chase some set pieces from Arsenal. But really for me, this slate, a lot of my play and builds are going to be uh, circling around OBS. I think he He's absolutely underpriced uh, on both sides. He should be the most expensive player this slate. Cardiff are arguably, outside of Everton, potentially the worst away team this slate. So I'm really looking to attack using OBS as much as possible. I think he has the highest upside this slate for a hat trick, if anyone. I think there are lots of players that are going to score goals. I think he has really high props for two goals and one of the highest, if if maybe the highest uh, props for a hat trick this late. I really do like it, especially from 9.6K. Is that something I'm instantly looking to jump on in cash? Absolutely not. He has been inconsistent this season uh, to the point where I'm not looking to use it in cash at all. But in GPP, uh, Ops is definitely going to be one of my favorite plays this late, if not my favorite. GPP play of the slate. So uh, for uh, for a final score here, I think it's probably going to be uh, 3-1 Arsenal. The thing is that Cardiff's going to score, so Arsenal are going to need multiple goals. They're not the most expensive salary on the slate, and while we're going to find this script of a team conceding and needing to score multiple happen time and time again, Arsenal is one of the few teams that possess a real ceiling that we could find not only condensed produ- production from one player like Obbs, but uh, a real serious thrashing or an outing where the ownership may not be there and the the thrashing that people may be looking for elsewhere won't happen as well uh so i'll say a 4-1-3-1 arsenal win uh preferably on the 4-1 or higher side second game on the slate we have brighton traveling to fulham really interesting game uh this should pan out to be which team can be worse than the other. Uh, in many ways, I'm straight fading bright in the slate. On both sides, they're way too expensive. Uh, and now... This is where the home team play kind of starts to go in. Brighton are, again, one of the worst away teams in the entire league. Fulham is just plain and simple one of the worst away team or one of the worst... Well, they are actually the worst away team in the league, uh, but they're at home this late, obviously. But uh, in terms of Fulham, they're just all around one of the worst teams in the league. So this is a really tough 
game to really call, I guess you could say, or put a postulation through on in terms of final results because they're just really bad. Uh, Brighton hasn't really kept a clean sheet since Matt, since Matt Ryan went away for the Asian Cup. Uh, their back line doesn't produce enough of a floor, uh, let alone a, an ever a chance at a ceiling. Their midfield's way too expensive and not seeing enough consistent minutes to really validate their salaries. And I, I almost feel like since it's Fulham that a lot of people are going to jump over Brighton thinking that they're going to be able to catch Fulham as a really bad team. And I don't think Fulham's a good team, but I also don't think at the same time that they're necessarily a bad team this slate. Uh, so there's a big difference there for me. And that's something I'm really looking to exploit. Like, uh, Pascal Girl was basically went from 4.3, 4.2K to 7K, 4.6. I was close. Uh, like consistently for weeks, just being nothing until he gets a goal, uh, five crosses and like 12.5, 12 points from a goal. So roughly and a goal and assist worth not a bad game, but really Fulham's bad and they're going to concede, but are they going to concede a lot? Is Brighton able to put out enough consistent DFS output? Because especially when we get to the forwards, we're looking at a bunch of players that are consistently not 90 minute plays. And that's really tough if you're looking to attack arguably the worst team in the league in Fulham. So in that case, you may end up looking back to the midfield and maybe you could get away with some Solly March if you think he can get 90 minutes, which he started to lose. Uh, I don't feel comfortable taking someone like Grobe who's still not getting 90 minutes and uh, seeing a massive, maybe I'm being too salary sensitive, but just a massive salary jump. Knocker's not really playing at all, and if he is playing, it's limited minutes. So, really, you're dropping down into nobody's names and a bunch of 60 minute forwards that take each other off uh, and defenders that really don't do much. So, yeah, like I know Fulham's a bad team, but this slate they're not really as bad anymore as their uh, ratings were or their standing would suggest and Brighton is as bad as their away record would suggest so yeah I'm, I'm looking at Fulham this slate I think Fulham make a lot of sense in a lot of different formats uh whether you I would definitely not chase the clean sheet bonus I think there's other defenders that do what Joe Brian does better than him for the same salary if not cheaper uh in particular Callum Chambers if you want to use him in cash I have absolutely no issue with that at 4.3k he's still going to get you six to eight fantasy points with too much issues as long as you can avoid him taking a card um uh, I'm not interested in Ryan Session or Schurler just because uh both will draw ownership and neither are necessarily DFS consistently DFS relevant enough to the point uh, validating their salaries, especially someone like Ryan Cessna at only 6.5k, like he'll be lucky to get five or six fantasy points on top of whatever else he does, which you need uh, to compete with people from that salary on this slate. So yeah, uh, I'm more on the boat of uh, John uh, Michael Sari uh, from only 4.2k. I think he makes a ton of sense this slate. Uh, even use him as a filler in GPP, but ideally you're looking to use him in cash here. Uh, when uh, you maybe spend down a keeper and then one spot in midfield and you're basically able to afford almost anything you want. Uh, so yeah, I have no problem with uh, John Michael Sari and even Calum Chambers in the same cash card because Brighton have been so poor away that it just stands as viable options. Now, the one guy that I have serious concerns over in FanDuel is Mitrovic, where I think he's massively overpriced. But in GPP, if you wanted to jump on some Mitrovic on DraftKings, I have absolutely no issue with that. I think that makes a lot of sense at only 7.3K. Brighton have been atrocious away from home. Fulham have been, by default, better at home than away. So I have absolutely no issue chasing 7.3K. GPP, but cash stick to the Sari and Calum Chambers, in particular uh, John Michael Sari, who makes for one of my uh, more light, low salary midfield cash plays for this slate. In terms of final score, I'm pretty sure it's going to be 1 1. Uh, maybe if we're lucky, we'll get a 2 1 Fulham win. I'll be very surprised if Brighton score more than the goal, and if they do, they're probably still not going to win, and I'll, it, I'll be blown away if they score three goals this slate, as bad as Fulham has been. 
And to, to further that, let's say Brighton does go out and score three goals, which is DFS, it can happen. Uh, a lot of that, too, will rely on a guy getting 90 minutes and seeing all of those three goals, which is really unlikely from Brighton's minutes and lack of, like, role offensive play. So, yeah, uh, jump on the Fulham this slate. Don't worry about how bad they've done this season. They're, they should do well this slate against Brighton. 2-1 Fulham win if we're being generous. Most likely a 1-1 draw. Avoid the keepers in this one. Next game on the slate, we have Everton traveling to Huddersfield. Um, this is another absolute banger of a game where we're just going to be able to make a stand and uh, hopefully jump on some ownerships and catch some people in GPP. Now, in terms of cash, I'm never going to tell someone not to play Gilfy Sigurdsson in cash. Uh, he's fine every single slate. And the same can be saying, said for Lucas Digne. Even from his salary this slate, it's really hard to ignore either of them in cash. Now, uh, I'm I'm going to be fading Sigurdsson. I'll be taking Digne in cash. I don't see any reason why not to until he's like 8K. Maybe I'll stop. But uh, in terms of uh, like... Yeah, Huddersfield have a new manager. The new manager loves to attack. Everton have not done well with pressure all season. Uh, they arguably are the coldest team in the entire league right now. Definitely the coldest team of the slate. They're not a team you you'll want to hedge a lot of money on. And I think a lot of people will whenever they look and see Huddersfield is playing at home. Um Huddersfield has been really bad, but they fired their manager. Their new manager is looking to completely transform the way this team plays. Now, a lot of this slate will determine on fading the Everton goal scoring, in particular, um, in particular Sigurdsson, while at the same time fading the Huddersfield keeper of Lossel, who should still concede. So we're expecting Everton to score, but not a lot. And we're expecting Huddersfield to just keep the score low, keep Everton's score low and hopefully score more than once themselves, which under the new manager is very possible. Uh, now, it's tough in terms of finding exactly what Huddersfield are going to do, especially coming off of an FA Cup break like this. It can be really hard to predict how teams are going to start coming off of uh, injury layoffs, for example. And Huddersfield have a few. Philip Billing is definitely in play from 6K. He isn't my favorite. I think Mimbenza is definitely someone I'm going to be jumping on from 4.6K. Some punch in. Uh, yeah, basically any 90-minute midfielder option in the midfielder from either site that you can get your hands on in Huddersfield Town, I think is a really sharp play this slate. Um, I wouldn't go overboard on them, but uh, in terms of like someone like Jason Punchin, why not? He's he's a legend in the English Premier League. He's got more experience than most teams. So, yeah, I have absolutely no issue with these guys. I would definitely wouldn't play like Hogg. A lot of this is looking at the lineup whenever it comes out for Huddersfield and deciding exactly who the offensive players are because under this new coach they should be going full ham offensive and I'm looking for that and to catch a lot of people sleeping and not expecting it and on top of that the people that are also separately jumping on Everton ownership. So I think there's a lot of sharp to be had here from Huddersfield this slate. I think a lot of it's going to come from their midfield. Probably in Benza. Maybe Pritchard. Uh, it's tough to know where that 90 minutes is going to come from with the new coach. But uh, I think if uh, Billing gets the start, I probably will roll with him. His floor has been safe enough all season. 6K isn't ideal. I'm kind of afraid to get camera assed a little bit like last slate. And he comes in and does nothing and comes off of the 70th minute. Uh, so I may just uh, risk the, the low salary on Mbenza, see what happens. But you're going to have to play some Huddersfield this slate, uh, especially in GPP. Uh, find out who the attacking guys are and get on one of them in GPP because nobody else will be and there's lots of reason to be. Final score, I'm going to say a 2-1 Huddersfield surprise win, last minute winner. Um, maybe a 1-1 draw. I don't see this being a sleeper, and I think a lot of people are going to be sleeping on this. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with both sides scoring. 2-1 Huddersfield win just to be a little bit fancy. 
Next game on the slate, we have West Ham traveling to Wolves. And this game is really hard to peg. It, these two teams are incredibly evenly matched. Both have been incredibly inconsistent, consistently inconsistent all season. West Ham have been better away from home. Wolves have just been up and down. It's really tough. And Wolves tends not to show up unless the team is like one of the best teams in the league. So a lot of times in these games, they come out really low and flat and they get caught. And like last game against Leicester, they were forced to score four. Now, one of my big concerns here is that Wolves has conceded basically three goals a game in their past three games here. And if Arnautovic is back for West Ham, that's a huge ups for them. And I'm probably going to be jumping on some Arnautovic. I don't want to say in cash because I think it's a little bit too risky. But from 6.6K, like, what are you really asking for? Um, he came off the bench in the FA Cup. They lost. He's upset. They're going to be looking to score. They're going to be looking to win. And I don't think Wolves is going to be defensively up for it. Will West Ham be up for it? That's the question. And I still think no. I'm probably going to fade this game just out of spite for knowing these two teams and their style. Um, Wolves is just as likely to shut this down for a 1-1 draw than have another three-goal crazy game that they'll have to come out here and uh, find ways to stay in games. And Like, both of these teams... So, Huddersfield, I should have mentioned last last game there... Huddersfield is not only bad this season, but they're statistically one of the worst teams in English Premier League history after 23 games. On top of that, if you consider every single team in the English professional leagues this season, that's every professional English team, Huddersfield has the third worst record in the entire professional English uh, leagues, like across the board. There's only... Three teams, well, I should say two teams below them, uh, AC, uh, AFC Wimbledon and, oh, uh, what was the other one? Oh, I can't remember the other team. I have it off the top of my head. But the point here is that West Ham just got knocked out of the cup by AFC Wimbledon. And Wolves just drew against Shrewsbury, who's barely better than AFC Wimbledon, which, if you were to compare that further, is barely better than Huddersfield's record. So, like, they're just not good teams. West Ham and Wolves did not perform well against these not good teams, even though they had every reason and right to perform well. So, it... Yeah, it's just there's a lot of reasons here where we can press the snooze button, as I say, and uh, you can sleep through these games, and you're, you're not really going to miss a whole lot in comparison to the rest of the slate. Could Arnautovic break the slate? Absolutely. Uh, could someone come from this game as DFS? Anything can really happen. But in terms of this uh, this game, I'm looking for like a 1-1 draw uh, at most, and really both teams cancel each other out. Um I could be wrong. Uh, maybe just take some Ronadovic to be safe. Uh, and if you want to be really risky, uh, you, you can probably get away with him in cash from only 6.6K. Let's even say 2-1 West Ham. Let's, let's just be real about it. 2-1 West Ham. Next game on the slate, we have my favorite game of the season. Burnley at Manchester United. This is basically Rob's favorite play for DFS 1 versus Rob's favorite play in DFS 2, smashing head-to-head. -head. Tom Heaton versus Manchester United. This is the clash of the titans of current DFS meta. So basically, the way I'm breaking this down is quite simple. I look at Manchester United right now as a boat, and either... There's two ways to look at. There's no room left on the boat. And if you get on the boat, you're just going to sink it. And you're going to sink down with everyone because you're just too late to the party. United is, I don't want to say due for regression, but if there was a moment where United wasn't going to do it, this is the moment. This is the game. This is where it happens. Now, where am I, is that coming from? Under Mourinho... Burnley has been an absolute thorn in the side of Man United for seasons and seasons. Um, Tom Heaton is still the best keeper in England. It doesn't matter who he plays. So every single slate, we can walk in knowing that we're going to have the best keeper 
in the country playing in a game where he's less than 4K. So off the bat, that's just an edge, plain and simple. It doesn't matter who he's playing. Now, when we consider who he's playing, Man United's Man United. You can take the home team. You're probably not going to lose out at the end of the day because it's the home team. Um, so that's really the Manchester United take here. It's old news at this point. They're expensive for a reason. If you can fit them all in, go for it. But I find more reason to try and get Lacazette at 70 minutes and OBS at 90 on Arsenal than take two 9K plus salaries on Man United for potentially a 2-1 max game. Um, that's kind of Burnley's mantra. That's what they do against these really big teams, especially this season, especially against teams like United. Uh, now, we'll talk about a team next who does that even more consistently. But even further than that, Burnley possess Tom Heaton, excellent option. And if Johan Berg Goodmanson continues to not feature on the squad list whatsoever, you basically have to lock in Dwight McNeil at only 5.7K. It, it isn't an option. Like, you have to do it's a free play it's a free play again and i know a lot of that has to do with people being afraid of manchester united mcneil has been putting in double digits against basically every team for a while now um so yeah uh i wouldn't read too deep into that like that's all you need for if he gets you 8.8k from 5.7 you're fine in cash. GPP, that's not ideal. Uh, you're definitely going to be uh, stretching for a low-owned guy to really go off to offset the lack of true ceiling you'll get from 8.8K. But like th this is the real deal here. Like This is the real chance for you to take a serious stand. Crystal Palace traveling to Liverpool last late. If you followed my video, this is just another replay of that. Burnley traveling to Manchester United is a situation where it's opening up an opportunity for us to stay off the boat and let it potentially sink. And what's going to happen here is um, a lot of people are going to be on the pod, but 9.6K, which will completely cut their ability to do anything else. A lot of people are going to be on the Rashford for 10.8K completely cuts their ability to do anything else on FanDuel it's even worse or even more expensive so yeah I just think there's a lot of warrant to fading Manchester United this late that isn't to say they're going to do bad they're probably still going to do fine and win this game 3-0 or 3-1 but in terms of like all the boxes Burnley checks them like even Ashley Burns and Chris Wood could have scored five goals last late against Watford and made me a million dollars but they didn't and that's just the way it goes sometimes so yeah it, it, you, you can keep chasing this they're at 90 minutes 90 minutes any 90 minutes we can get our hands on this late we jump on because the teams that have no 90 minutes are going to be trapping a lot of people and I really like Burnley the slate to not necessarily go out and win or not necessarily go out and find a result, but hinder Man United enough that their ownership and salaries won't pay off come the end of the slate. So that's really my take for this game. Man United's probably going to win 3 nothing, but my my take is actually a 2-1 Burnley win or a 2-1 Man United win. I think the final score will be 2-1. Uh, I'm hoping it will be Burnley. And if that happens, that's going to completely turn this slate upside down. That's going to take 40% chunks out of GPPs where guys are going to be done. Uh, and there's just not going to be true ceilings. Now, can can someone still, can Rashford still go out and get 30 fantasy points off of a goal against Burnley? Absolutely. He could go completely bonkers. Many people could. But is that to say that could happen? No, I like Tom Heaton to do that a lot more. So, yeah, 2-1 final score either way. I'll say Burnley because I want to be fancy again. But chances are it's just going to be United uh, win 3 nothing. Final game of the slate. We have it once more. Another excellent stand uh, where we get to take a chance here and really decide our fate immediately right off the bat and take a, a massive stand against the ownership where we have New, uh, Newcastle hosting Manchester City. So 
The real kicker is that Manchester City right now is playing full throttle. Like, absolutely nothing about their play right now would suggest that they're anything different than their normal, let's go on a 23-game winning streak. So, if you're asking me which team I like more to hinder the opposition, it's probably Newcastle, or excuse me, it's probably uh, Burnley, but Newcastle are very close second behind there. Very, very close second. Um... City have like eight straight clean sheets. They're just completely fire right now. Uh, the big thing though for me is once again, I'll kind of break it down like I did last game. Not necessarily players. I'll say Sergio Aguero has 12 goals in 14 games against Newcastle. And that's an English Premier League record for the most goals by a player against a single club. So if Aguero gets to start here and he's looking like he could see 90 minutes, I have absolutely no issue with him. Really, in either format, he'll have massive goal props. But, but, there is a massive but. There is a massive but. So, okay, I want to try and get this right for everyone, so just give me a second because it's actually really, really relevant stat. Okay, so this season, Newcastle has against at home against Spurs and Arsenal, away to both the Manchesters and in both of their Chelsea games this they kept they lost all the games they lost them all but all the games were within one goal uh, they're not getting blown out this season that's really what I'm getting at here now the main theme of why I'm saying this is because everyone in their dog knows at this point of the season that you're supposed to chase Man City for an onslaught of five goals and if you quickly fact check back their recent outings and whether it's all competitions or just English Premier League games they've been winning and putting in enough goals at a rate that would make you think they'll do that again this slate and unless you really look into Newcastle and seeing how well they've done all season at keeping basically every big six team to a minimum you won't know that you're basically walking into a trap here it's really an ownership trap now that being said can Sergio Aguero go out and score two goals and uh, Man City wins 2-1? Incredibly likely that will happen. Um, so I'm not saying that like fade Manchester City because they can't do it. It's kind of the same situation for Manchester United. I'm not saying Rashford can't go out and do amazing things and break a slate on a 2-1 win. It's just when Arsenal, I'm looking at Arsenal to score four goals for cheaper it's it's just tough. It's tough. That's where I'm looking, especially on Man City, where I know they're going to have, again, 40% chunks of people are going to be expecting Man City to score four goals. And that's incredibly unlikely. Newcastle home games haven't seen a team, the away team, score four goals yet this season. So could it happen now? Absolutely. It would happen if anyone to City. But at the same time, it's just... Yeah, it's just not where I'm looking. I like basically everything else other than a City blowout game and a Manchester United blowout game. Uh, the, that's just not where I'm at this slate. Uh, I think DeBraca makes for an incredible goaltender play, just like Tom Heaton. What I plan on doing is duplicating cash cards and just throwing those two different uh, to differentiate and trying to pay off the, the salary someplace else in a little tweak, but... That's that's really my take this slate. Uh, I'll say a two one, maybe maybe even it, we could get really lucky and see a three two Manchester City win and Newcastle scores two goals because I think Rondon super viable. Rondon has been taking an incredible amount of shots this season. Now I say incredible because if you've followed the English Premier League over the past few seasons, you know uh, Solomon Rondon has been one of the laziest players, like a la Rob, lazy a la Rob players. I'll call that all day. I have full license to because I've always been arguably, according to everyone else, the laziest player in the field. So yeah, it, it's tough uh, to live that life, but he has been shooting the ball at a rate, uh, especially from 4.7K, where if he catches one, you're basically getting the points for a goal on top of Basically, again, basically, um, since uh, so many people will be on the Ederson play, that's another minus two for them. So basically, you're getting another plus two on top of people chasing the Man City clean sheet. So you're getting another implied three, three points 
from that Rondon goal. So it's an incredibly valuable goal this late if he happens to land one. And I'll even further this for everyone. I'll even give you a little inside knowledge. I, Rob Diamond, on the uh, the Bacon Hill Bulldogs in the English uh, Premier League fantasy website, the season long, I'm keeping Rondon on the bench this late. So if that isn't the biggest sign that you should play Rondon in GPP at least once this late in a deep GPP, maybe chase him in the king of the pitch, something like that, um, I really think he could pay off uh, from his salary from the amount of shots he's taking, from the amount of ownership that City will bring, uh, and from just the general uh, overall take of knowing you qualified from the king of the pitch because of the overall English Premier League legend Solomon Rodden. So that is my takes this slate. Let's say uh, a 2-1 Manchester City win uh, to finish it off and Rodden gets a goal and Debraca makes eight saves, uh, only allows two goals. Thank you very much for tuning in, everyone. Uh, Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter, Sir Robert Six on all the main sites, Rotopros.com. Get over, check us out. We got a free trial on the go. Sign up, join our Slack. Check out, we got all our free articles. Uh, you hit the articles in the top right hand corner. Basketball is absolutely flames. We have unbelievable information and content for all the different sports. Uh, incredible cheat sheets for everyone to look at and make your own decisions that we can help you learn and uh, grow for the future so that you're just not getting free picks and things like that. And that's really what this is all about here is growing your bankroll. So I hope everyone had a, a really good break for the FA Cup. Uh, a nice break uh, with the NHL too for the All-Star break. So uh, let's jump back into making money here this midweek. Uh, good luck everyone. Hopefully see you at the top. Rotopros.com. Check out my articles over there well under the as well under the soccer. And uh, yeah, hopefully everyone uh, finds this useful this late. Take care everyone.